Hey there, fashion friends. Welcome to today's episode. What are we talking about on today's episode? Well, let's see. Like, ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like. Ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like. On today's episode, we are talking about seven different style aesthetics. This is basically the next uh, episode in my series of finding your personal style. If you haven't seen my previous video on how to find your personal style, definitely check that out. It kind of gives a good overview of an approach that you can take to finding your own personal style. Within that video, I speak to a lot of different points. So in this series, we're going to cover some of those points. I know that a lot of people really were interested in knowing how to style um, or how to balance styling uh, your different style personalities, which I speak about in that video. Um, but I feel like there's a few different things that we need to kind of cover or touch on before we get into that video. So today's video is really just super straightforward and speaking about seven different style aesthetics. So se seven different sort of style types that you can have. There are so many different style types out there in the world. I don't even want it. Like there was one article that I found that's got, that was like talking about 40 different style types and speaking to ones that I've never even knew existed. And I've been in fashion for a really long time. So, um, yeah, there really is endless possibilities, but yeah, I do think it's important to kind of know the fundamentals, to know the base, to know the kind of where to stem off of. Um, so these are just 17 style aesthetics that I think are kind of like the most important ones, the most common ones, I guess. And the ones as well as that, that I see people speak to the most on my channel, the ones that people talk about being um, their personal style, um, as well as that a lot of the, the buzzwords that I use um, in my episodes. So those are the ones that we're kind of addressing here today. If you feel like none of these ones speak to you in your personal style or your personal style aesthetic, I will link a couple uh, articles down below or a couple other links down below so that you kind of can further investigate that for yourself uh, to kind of figure that out. But unfortunately, I just can't talk about all of them in uh, one episode. With this episode, my intention is hopefully by the end of it, you will have it identified what your specific style aesthetics are. Um, and I don't feel like you always just have to have only one. I definitely don't. I definitely don't just have one style aesthetic. Um, but when you are aware of the certain style types that you have, it does make it easier to kind of uh, know your direction for styling. And as well as that, it will really be helpful going further into the finding your personal style series. Um, if this is a series that you really want to keep tabs on, I will link the playlist below and you can follow this playlist to be able to refer to all the different episodes. So what I'll kind of touch on for each style aesthetic is the sort of a technical uh, definition of each style that I've pulled from uh, dictionary.com. And then I'll go into kind of my personal opinion or my personal description for each as well. So with that, I better stop talking because we've got a lot to get into. So, okay, so number one is avant-garde. So the dictionary definition, the advanced group in any field, especially in the visual, literary, or musical arts whose works are characterized chiefly by unorthodox and experimental methods. So avant-garde to me is one of my favorite style aesthetics that I don't necessarily encompass myself, but I think it's one of my favorite that I really appreciate in an artistic way. Very visionary, uh, very futuristic. So if you are somebody that is kind of encompassing this style, you really won't be following any sort of rule, any sort of, you know, perimeters. I feel like you will just fully be kind of going outside of the box. Number two is minimalist. The dictionary.com definition is a person who favors a moderate and slow approach. Fair enough. So the funny thing with a minimalist style is it, I, I feel like it can be translated in a bunch of different ways. So some people might say it's very general, like sort of style aesthetic of uh, really clean, minimal lines, no sort of 
crazy details, just really clean textures, um, not a lot of textures, not mixing too many textures. Uh, so just a very beautiful, clean sort of aesthetic. I wouldn't say that's fully me. I'd say for me, my, my minimalist style approach is just the really paring things down really making sure not to have too much, kind of go with the theory of less is better. So that's kind of my minimalist theory. So number three is a maximalist. The dictionary.com definition is a person who favors a radical and immediate approach. So maximalist is basically the complete opposite to a minimalist. Uh, this is gonna be somebody that wants just more, more, more. I would say Iris Amphel is like a maximalist because she just loves layers and layers of amazing stuff. To me, she just owns that look and I absolutely love it. I'd say some people class maximalist and an, an eclectic as in the same category, but I don't really think it's the same. So I actually have eclectic further down the list, so we'll get further into that. Whether it's bold prints, whether it's bold colors, whether it's like tons and tons of accessories, whether it's just these out there sort of patterns, just somebody that's kind of taking their style to the max, um, isn't really holding back. That's what I see as a maximalist style aesthetic. Number four is contemporary of the present time modern. I always kind of think of contemporary as kind of in line with minimalism. I always think contemporary is a more clean lines sort of look. Kind of like the child of like, if sophisticated married avant-garde, you know, if that makes sense. <laughs> Number five is eclectic. Not following any one system, selecting or choosing from various sources. Yes, I like that description. Eclectic is somebody that doesn't necessarily subscribe to any sort of aesthetic, in my opinion. It's somebody that I don't necessarily think it's a maximalist because I think some eclectic people can be quite minimal with their eclecticness. It doesn't necessarily mean that you want to wear more and more and more. Okay, number six is streetwear. Comfortable yet trendy, pulling inspiration from hip hop and skate culture. Some are hype beasts who seek hype like limited edition sneakers, etc. I think the streetwear culture is very much, you know, driven by comfortable yet trendy sort of clothes. But what I kind of like that's happening with the streetwear vibe, the streetwear style is a lot more people are kind of taking it to another level of what I like to call streetwear chic. And that's what I love to uh, incorporate within my style a lot is taking that sort of casual, edgy streetwear vibe and then adding just a little bit of elevation of like the femininity and to then elevate it to a streetwear chic uh, look. It's really just about your own personal creativity and your own personal expression. So I really love that. Number seven is sophisticated. Of, for, or reflecting educated taste, knowledgeable use, etc. No, I get that. It kind of, I feel like when you have a sophisticated a style aesthetic, it exudes sort of that you are knowledgeable, that you are, you know, culturally aware. And that definitely exudes in that sophisticated style. I think specifically, it definitely has a lot more of a mature sort of look and a mature uh, appearance. And again, it can be very clean, very minimal lines. Um, and usually it's gonna be a lot more tasteful. It's not gonna be as showy. It's the great thing about sophisticated style is I feel like there's a really big range of it. So that's what's a lot of fun is you can really play with it. And because it is such an extreme, I think it's just such a fun style to add that contrast to a lot of the other styles. Number eight is androgynous. Neither clearly masculine nor clearly feminine in appearance. Um, I think that really <laughs> pretty much sums it up. I think um, this is such a cool look. I think that's a perfect description because I think a lot of people take androgynous as if to mean more like boyish, more tomboy, um, which yeah, it's not necessarily that, it's just more having that. Uh, I mean, I guess like the best term would say, like the uh, more genderless approach to a style or 
Um, I think you could also look at it as a balanced style. So some people refer to my look as sort of androgynous because I think I have some boyish charm in my style, but as well as that, I have a lot of femininity. So I kind of balance the, them out because I don't think you have to be feminine or masculine. You don't have to be one or the other, do you? I think that's the beautiful thing about this style aesthetic. Number nine is Sabordi. Designed for or suitable for sport. Yep, pretty straightforward that one. Especially these days with people really embracing the yoga pant look or the loungewear look, people are really getting into that sporty vibe. I think it can be translated in so many different ways. It can be feminine, it can be masculine, it can be sexy, it can be, you know, whatever it is. It's, it's a fun one that can be easily translated into whatever sort of style mood or style personality you are, which we will be getting into in further videos on the style moods and style personalities. So stay tuned for that. Number 10 is goth, a person who is part of a subculture favoring this style of music and a dark aesthetic. Obviously a lot of people associate it with black. Maybe it's a lot of dark makeup. There's a pretty wide range to the goth aesthetic. You know, some people, are full-on goth like there's a whole full-on following sort of cult following of the goth nature it's not like it has to be that extreme i think there's a lot of people that take it that are on the other end of the spectrum that just like to sprinkle in some of that goth aesthetic but i think it is a very cool effortless classic sort of style it's really easy to sprinkle in other little bits of style in there as well to to elevate the look. Okay, number 11 is preppy. A person who favors or is viewed as favoring clothing style or behavior associated with traditional prep schools. Yep. Just, you know, a very classic, you know, the polo shirts and khakis. That is your kind of cliche preppy. But yeah, you don't have to like, it doesn't have to be that apparent. It's just something that is very clean, classic, casual. Um, just clean colors, neutral colors, and just classic silhouetted pieces. And again, what I love about this style aesthetic is that it's very, very timeless. I don't really ever feel like this goes out of style. And what's fun about it is again, it's very, because it is very clean and very classic, um, you can easily elevate it with other different style aesthetics to make it a little bit more edgy. Number 12 is classic. Of the first or highest quality, class or rank, serving as a standard model or guide. To me, when I think about classic, I more think about quality and timelessness. So that's how, I guess that does definitely work with that description, with that definition. I see the classic style as somebody that prioritizes timeless pieces. Speaking to the definition, that is going to be probably the highest level, the highest grade of clothes. Uh, because obviously things that are timeless are things that have withstood the test of time. Number 13 is retro. <sighs> of or designating the style of an earlier time. I love when people take a sort of retro period of time and really just own it. Number 14 is tomboy. So the technical definition of this is a girl whose behavior is considered more typical of boys than of girls. I, I more prefer boyish charm. And this to me is more just, you know, maybe not as tight fitting of pieces, things that are maybe a little bit more squared off, a little bit more slouchy, a little bit more oversized. I love sprinkling boyish charm into my aesthetic because a lot of the stuff I wear is very feminine. So I love, love, love to balance it out with that boyish charm. Number 15 is grunge. Yes. A style or fashion derived from a movement in rock music, in fashion characterized by unkempt clothing and in music by aggressive songs. Okay. Yeah, I see grunge as just kind of that real, just don't give an F, taking casual and streetwear to a whole nother level and just really adding a full on edginess and rebellion to casual and streetwear is kind of what I see it as. Number 16 is boho or bohemian. So a person as an artist or writer who lives and acts free of regard for conventional rules and practices. 
All right. I feel like the bohemian definitely derives from like that gypsy vibe, you know, the flowy skirts and the crop tops and just a very free spirited vibe. And so I think it's definitely come into our current times, our current trends and has translated into like the more flowy feminine type pieces. And I think it's beautiful and elegant and lovely. And again, it's a fun style because it is an extreme style to add, you know, contrast to other style aesthetics. And number 17, casual. So casual means without definite or serious intention, careless or offhand, passing. Whoa. All right, dictionary.com doesn't seem too uh, partial on the casual front. <laughs> so I would say for a style aesthetic, uh, casual is, yeah, it is a very laid back, more vibe. I wouldn't say that it means that you have no intention, but yeah, I would say that it's pieces that you wanna put on and not have to really think about. Um, pieces that you wanna have um, kind of be effortless. Um, and you don't really need to put a lot of thought into when you're styling a casual look. So I definitely love casual. It speaks to a lot of my style aesthetic. Um, and the cool thing about casual is I feel like it speaks to a lot of style aesthetics. Again, it's one of those that I think is very similar to classic. I feel like it's a almost like a subcategory within the other style categories, within the other style aesthetics. And also I feel like Casual can be considered a style mood, which we will also be getting into. All right, you guys, there we have it. 17 style aesthetics or 17 different style categories. Hopefully some of these you identified with. Like I said, if none of them did, I will make sure to link some stuff down below for you guys to do further research. Make sure to comment below if you do have any questions, I will be happy to answer those for you. And stay tuned for more personal style episodes coming to you in my personal style playlist. That's it for today. So I hope that you have a beautiful, fantastic rest of your day. Stay healthy, stay safe, love, and support each other. Okay, well, we will definitely be chatting soon. Bye.